The first trailer for Bumblebee just dropped yesterday, and I'm gonna break this thing down for you guys, let you know what I found, what I thought, maybe some theories in there, and as always, there is that potential for spoilers. This is all conjecture on my part, but let's get started. The first shot in this trailer is a bit hard to tell what's going on. Uh, there's this forest, and it looks like a big character, most likely Bumblebee, uh, has maybe crash landed. I'm, I'm assuming or I'm theorizing that this is when Bumblebee first arrives to Earth, maybe uh, just a year or two before the events of this film, maybe hundreds or thousands of years before the events of this film. Uh, that remains to be seen, but that's, that's what I think. And this is just him, he crash lands and he's like, what, where am I? Type of thing. That's, that's all I see. Then we get a few shots of Haley Steinfeld's character, Charlie Watson. She is the main character in this movie. Um, she's like just looking out over the ocean, driving her little moped, and it looks like she's uncovering Bumblebee to look at him. But what I find interesting about this is they are kind of going the Avengers Infinity War route with this trailer with a voiceover from a previous movie, the first movie in particular. Whereas Avengers Infinity War did, there was an idea bring together a group of remarkable people. I said it a little like Samuel Jackson. This one, they're taking the Bernie Mac dialogue from the first Transformers movie where Sam Witwicky's buying the car, and they're like, we're gonna make this our little Avengers little voiceover. I get it, and I kind of appreciate it, but it's just, it just seems like a stretch trying to be too much like Avengers to me. Now we see Charlie, Haley Seinfeld's character again, uncovering Bumblebee, what looks like to be in a junkyard. The synopsis of this movie is basically Bumblebee is on the run. I don't know if he's just trying to hide from the Decepticons or maybe he did something and he just he's a deserter. Probably not. I don't think they'll change too much of his backstory, but you never know with these Transformers movies, uh, but it is directed by Travis Knight and not Michael Bay, thank God. Okay, I get it, but is this really why Bumblebee is named Bumblebee? Because there's a beehive in his wheelhouse? Okay. So I know that this is the 80s and Volkswagen Beetles were kind of big back then. She just looks a little too just amazed by this car that she found in a junkyard. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, maybe in a junkyard you find this beautiful working Volkswagen Beetle that it's actually going to run. So, you know, I guess that's why she might be so amazed and impressed. But other than that, it's not that remarkable of a car outside of the fact that it's a Transformer being Bumblebee. But she doesn't know that yet. To my knowledge, it was from this trailer at least, this is when she first sees a car. She doesn't know it's Bumblebee. We also get the shot of Charlie driving Bumblebee, uh, what looks like to be either a younger brother or her son. Uh, now, Haley Steinfeld, the actress, is only 21 years old. So either she's going to be like a really young mother or there's going to be a big gap between her and her next sibling, her brother probably. Uh, they'll they'll find some kind of family drama to put in this movie because you know us as an audience we can't connect with a robotic character um, you know Wally wasn't successful uh, I robot wasn't a great movie you know none of those movies were good that had a robot as a main character right so here we get a bunch of evidence that Haley Seinfeld's character, Charlie, is a mechanic. Uh, she's got this broken down car, or at least a car that has no engine, beside Bumblebee. Looks like she's going to start working on Bumblebee because, you know, the uh, last main character we had was an inventor. Now we need a mechanic that's actually going to work more just on cars instead of everything. Personally, I'd rather not have a human as the main character. Uh, I'd rather have Bumblebee as the main character. But, again, these, these, this is still in the Michael Bay Transformers universe, so every other Transformers movie has been mainly about the humans, with the side characters being the Transformers. Even though they're the titular characters, they are still the side characters, and I really hope that doesn't happen in this movie. But the budget would confirm that uh, theory, because the budget was like half, if that, of some of the other Transformers movies. So. so Bumblebee's already using the radio, but no sound is coming out of it, at least in this trailer. Um, maybe that's what Haley Steinfeld's character Charlie was going to go fix. I don't know, but you know, she is startled. She starts feeling the car, because it's a nice looking car, not bad. 
Uh, and then something falls off of Bumblebee. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a gun, his arm, his voice box. I have no idea what that is. It's just a little piece of his body. Maybe this is like after a battle that Bumblebee had and he had to take this form to disguise himself because again, he's on the run. So then Charlie gets underneath the car to start looking at stuff and she brings the flashlight past what looks like a face and she brings it back and the lights light up. Personally, I have to say I love this idea because I've always wondered because you know, the Transformers, they fold back into a car somehow. Where does their face go? And I love the fact that they're addressing this. However, if this is still how they see, um, where is his face? It looks to me from this trailer, it looks like he's just looking straight down at the pavement while he's driving. That just doesn't seem safe. You'd think that they'd be looking through like the grill of the engine, you know, the hood. Uh, but I don't know, this is, this is all out of context in the trailer, so we don't really know exactly where she's looking or where exactly the face is. And that is probably digging way too deep <laughs> into the logical sense of these movies. However, I do have to say that this transformation with Charlie just kind of laying on the ground underneath Bumblebee as he transforms right over her is really cool looking. And I love the fact that they're pretty much showing where every little piece is going. I mean, obviously there's a lot of cheating going on. They're just folding pieces of metal that would never fold. But because it's obviously it's a transformer, an alien robot, that it's able to fold these pieces of metal to transform itself, I think it's really cool looking and it's a, it's a great shot. And Bumblebee is a lot smaller than we remember him. When he was the Camaro in the other five Transformers movies, he was much bigger than he is in this movie, at least in this trailer so far. Um, and I, I just gotta wonder, like, are they ever gonna explain that? Probably not. They're probably just gonna be like, well, you know, when he takes the form of a certain car, he's bigger, but when he takes the form of this car, he's smaller. And, you know, that's fine. I can accept that because it's, it's a silly movie. But, you know what? I like his design. He looks great. It's very G1 type of look, and personally, I think it works much better than the Camaro ever did unfortunately. As much as I love the design of Bumblebee in the first few movies, this just, this brings it back home. However, I don't like how he acts like a child where he just kind of curls up in a corner. Um, I really hope that he's able to talk because I want them to explain in this movie, this is a prequel, like a, a Bumblebee solo story. Um, we need to be, we need to have explanations given to us about why he's not able to talk, uh, and why he's been on Earth before everyone else. And for some reason I get the feeling that they're not going to tell us any of that. They're just going to glaze over it again, like, oh, my voice box was destroyed in a battle against Megatron. Or, oh, I, I, just, I just came here early just to scout out everything. It's like, well, explain a little bit more than just vague words. It is, again, like I said, directed by Travis Knight, not Michael Bay, so there is a higher uh, probability that it'll happen. If Michael Bay were directing it, nothing would be explained. It'd just His form would be changed randomly on the go just because, you know, it, it just looks cooler. But, again, Bumblebee's appearance in this scene just kind of reminds me of more of a child. However, I do have to say I think I'm going to like this scene where they first start talking to each other because uh, Haley Steinfeld, she's, she's playing off, she's playing the surprised, happy, and just shocked role, like just in amazement of this alien robot. And I think, she, I think this scene is going to be a cute, fun, um, potentially beautiful scene. I, I love the music in this trailer, that's what makes it more appealing. So I don't know how it's actually going to play out in the movie. And I'm assuming when she raises her hand saying, I'm not going to hurt you, maybe he acts out in violence, about to shoot her or something, who knows. And this part, after she asks, what's your name, I don't think that's exactly from that part because he just kind of opens his eyes really quick. <laughs> I have a feeling that's when he just starts, he snaps, and he's going to start shooting or trying to shoot Haley Steinfeld's character. I don't know, maybe. So this shot of Bumblebee running through the woods, uh, it's a great shot. I love this shot, personally. But if you look closely, this is not his Volkswagen Beetle form. Uh, this is a different form, which I'll tell you what it is when we get to a different shot. But 
I have a feeling that this is either he's being shot at by um, Sector 7 and John Cena's character or just some other government agency or this is a battle against a, uh, a Decepticon or a couple Decepticons. Maybe it's the Bumblebee Barricade showdown because as far as I know Barricade is going to be in this movie and we're finally going to get the showdown that we've always wanted and we've never gotten. So we see Charlie and some other character that I don't know riding in Bumblebee. The sunroof is open and they're just they're cheering because they're on like the ocean side. It's kind of cool looking. Um, I have a feeling this movie is going to be more like a coming of age type of movie instead of a Transformers type of movie. <laughs> I mean, obviously, all the Transformers movies have a different story revolving on their human main character. And, you know, the first Transformers movie was kind of a coming-of-age movie. Uh, same as the second one, I guess. Uh, but this one, I think, might actually do it really well. I don't know. I've never actually seen a Travis Knight movie. I still have not seen Kubo and the Two Strings. I really want to, but I still haven't seen it. And, of course, we got to mix in uh, The Shape of Water, because... Yeah, one uh, best picture, right? So as cool as this transformation on the beach looks, it, looking at it frame by frame, it's really rough, and it's the shadows aren't working quite well. It's not finished yet, so you know, don't worry. It'll look much better when you see it in the theater at Christmas time. Because I, it's very interesting that this movie is coming out during Christmas time. Normally, these Transformers movies comes out come out in the summertime with the other big blockbusters. So that. I, I don't know, I might change everybody's mind about the Transformers movies, I hope, uh, but we'll see. So this shot of Bumblebee kind of picking up Charlie, it's weird, but I also kind of like it. It <laughs> kind of reminds me a little of King Kong, you know, he's going to take the girl to the top of the Empire State Building and fight off the planes and die. Uh, um, but, I don't know, it, it looks kind of fun. Uh, you know, I'm assuming that, you know, he's going to pick her up, run away, toss her up, transform, and she's going to land in a seat and drive off and fight ensues. And here is John Cena's character. Uh, I don't know what uh, government agency it works for, maybe Sector 7, just some military unit, who knows. Uh, but it's John Cena, so they're going to try and play off his fame right now and be like... They're probably going to have something where they scream some kind of name or some silly thing, but... Again, it's not directed by Michael Bay, so they may not do that. Hopefully not. So this shot really interests me. Uh, when Bumblebee just kind of lands from some huge jump or fall, uh, it's a really cool shot. But if you look really closely, this is not his Volkswagen Beetle form again. The, he, the grill on his, his chest area looks more like a Jeep which I find very interesting. So he's gonna be changing forms at least once in this movie from a Jeep to a Volkswagen or vice versa. Uh, I think that's a cool idea. I've always wanted that because robots in disguise, they, maybe they should be changing their form more than once every five years. But if you look even closer, he's got more of the antenna uh, on his head and there's a better shot of this later on in the trailer. Now this shot is probably my favorite of the trailer because it's a plain transformer and this transformation is incredible looking. Uh, it's simple but it's incredible at the same time. You know it's not, it doesn't look quite as advanced as some of the other transformations because it happens quicker um, but it is probably just as advanced and complex when the animators have to animate out all those little tiny pieces that have to move out of the way. Um, I know because I've done a few Transformers short films, CGI, uh, and this plane is the exact same plane that I used in one of my little short films. Um, if you want to see it, I'll put the link to it in the description down below. This was a few years ago, and I was just starting out in CGI. I'm still really new to it, but it's, it's fun, and I hate the voiceover work in it, mainly for me. But... This, this shot is awesome because I think that this is Starscream and it would be great to have Starscream back. There's two th reasons why I think it's Starscream. One, it's a plane. It's a jet. It's, you know, we haven't seen a jet, a real jet, um, that's in disguise as a jet transformer uh, since, I think, Dark of the Moon. We had, you know, uh, Megatron 
and I, f I forget the other character's name in Transformers The Last Night, but he was a jet as well. Um, but we didn't really get them being in disguise as a jet. And when they transformed into their jet forms, it was like, boom, boom, they're, ju they're a jet, they're gone, and now they're back in the robot form all of a sudden in the next shot. We didn't really see many transformations with that. And this looks to be promising. The other reason I think it's Starscream is because look at that face. That looks very similar to the G1 Starscream from the Transformers cartoon. So the color scheme is right there. Uh, the face is there. I think it's Starscream. It is a prequel set in the 80s, so Starscream could definitely make it back. And it would be great to have the original voice of Starscream, or at least like the Transformers Prime voice of Starscream. Personally, I think I'd be okay with the 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 voice of the first Starscream in the first Transformers movie because that voice was kind of cool and he only has like a line, one line in the movie, maybe two. This shot of Bumblebee kind of looks like he's falling off a cliff, half Transforms, brings his hands out to grab the guardrail to keep himself from falling. I'm assuming Haley Steinfeld's character Charlie is inside the car at this point because it wouldn't be an intense scene without a human in danger, right? Um, this could be the chase, the, at least the first chase scene between uh, Bumblebee and Barricade, I think that would be cool. Um, I honestly would really like them to have more than one encounter, maybe two or three. That would be awesome, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, so I, I gotta talk about this hugging shot. Uh, this hugging shot just, it just doesn't work for me. I get it, it's Bumblebee, it's your cute character, but He's still like a like a a warrior robot. You know, he he kills other robots and fights, and he's still made of metal. Like hugging him, I don't think would very would be very comfortable. Have you ever tried to hug your car? It doesn't work. Um, I, I don't know. They they just they try to make Bumblebee too cute and relatable, and I don't know. They've always tried to make him more of like a pet than a character. And that just kind of has always bothered me. I do like the fact that Charlie, it seems like she's talking to Bumblebee when she says, you have people out there that need you. Like, you need to go do things. You can't just be here with me. You know, I, I kind of like that. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I don't know if she's actually talking to Bumblebee. I assume she is because she's got a little bit of blood on her face when she says it. And the face mask that Bumblebee puts on, it's really cool looking. I, I personally, I like it. However, he does look a little too much like a Bumblebee face, <laughs> like a, more like a yellow jacket face, but it's still cool. And I, I like this better than any of the other um, like battle masks that Bumblebee has worn. This one just looks really cool. So Bumblebee catches a helicopter and keeps it from crashing. Even though it hit him and that would still hurt really bad whoever's in that, you know, it'd be basically like crashing except you're hitting something that gives away a little bit instead of the ground that, well, doesn't. Uh, but it's just an interesting choice of shot to put in the trailer for like one of the money shots. But the shot that follows it of Bumblebee just kind of standing next to this Humvee, um, I guess I was wrong earlier about him saying that it was a Jeep form. It is a Hummer form, probably, which is cool. Uh, it's kind of a callback to Ratchet, I guess, a little bit from at least the first few movies. And if you look closely, he's got the horns on top of his head that really call back to the G1 Bumblebee from the original Transformers cartoon, and I like that. So I like this scene when Charlie puts in the tape in the tape deck to help Bumblebee say what he's trying to say, and of course, it's Rick Astley. You know, we're getting Rick rolled in this movie too. Um, you see, I, I like the idea, but it doesn't quite work because this is before being Rick rolled was a thing. Long before being Rick rolled was a thing. So, you know, I don't know. But I, I do have to ask like, where is she putting this? Where is the tape deck on Bumblebee? Because it's at head level, it's a little awkward when you really think about it, based on this wide shot. <laughs> Just saying. So that is the trailer, that's all the theories I got for you. I'm excited for this movie. I, I think it's gonna be much better than any of the trans other Transformers movies that we got. Maybe not much better, but at least better than The Last Night and Revenge of the Fallen and Age of Extinction. But I mean, 
one and three are still my favorites. I really like those two movies. But what did you guys think of this trailer? Are you excited for this movie? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And make sure you hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button so you can be notified when we upload new content. Also, check out our Patreon page where you can support us and get early access to videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.